congratulations, uh, 10 years. Uh, it, uh, I know that it has not been easy. Maybe uh, uh, the energy topics were not so uh, appealing as at the moment. So times are extremely stressful, but you know, uh, energy is again back in the top agenda of the companies, uh, consumers, politicians. Uh, we are here again. So uh, hope that next uh, 10 years will be easier for you. <laughs> and uh, oh. as, uh, yeah, uh, this is really my 10th time to participate uh, here, and uh, actually this is my honor to be uh, again here with you, uh, speaking as we are the. Uh, uh, biggest uh, wind generator in, uh, in Lithuania. Uh, we are the biggest, uh, uh, or let's say, leading uh, renewable generator in all our region. Uh, we are operating from Finland uh, down to Poland. Of course, Poland is a huge market, maybe not leading in Poland yet, but, uh, but at least uh, uh, we are developing very fast. I'm also very happy to say that in Lithuania we are selling only green power. Uh, this is actually our first market where we are selling only green power. And a big part of this green power is uh, generated here in Lithuania. I'm, I'm also very, very happy that we are trust of uh, around 115,000 Lithuanian consumers, which makes us a second energy company by the volumes in uh, Lithuania. And I'm also extremely proud of uh, our Lithuanian team, which is already uh, up to uh, 100 people uh, working in Lithuania, which, may, which makes us uh, very much a Lithuanian company as well. Uh, great job. And I'm also proud of our investors, as our Benefit uh, Green is uh, a listed company and uh, uh, is having uh, 60,000 uh, shareholders today, as many of those are also from Lithuania. So many reasons to be uh, back here in Lithuania. So, uh, my uh, opening slide is not as fancy as from the uh, uh, other side. Uh, this is the uh, real truth of the war, which uh, from the from the streets. And uh, we can say today really that this war, which is going physically on uh, in uh, Ukraine, is a brutal we hear and see every day. Uh, and we really hope it will be over very soon. This war is also here, and, uh, and the energy is efficiently used as a weapon uh, by Russia against Europe. Uh, we have seen that uh, we have a new page of this uh, war uh, uh, when our infrastructure in the waters of Denmark and uh, Sweden was exploded recently. And maybe the latest uh, to see how far it can go that uh, we have heard that during the last week uh, a new site uh, for the Russian uh, uh, military forces was an energy. So uh, the latest uh, understanding is that one third of the Ukraine uh, uh, energy infrastructure and generation is taken down just in one week. Think about this. So uh, uh, our uh, aggressive neighbor knows very well how to use energy as a as a weapon, and uh, so we should have no illusions that uh, uh, one or other way uh, uh, his steps are done, or he has no further steps to take uh, uh, to take uh, uh, against Europe. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, we are ready uh, for the extremely difficult winter. Uh, and uh, of course, many uh, crisis plans uh, for the short term. But uh, we should, of course, see how to uh, manage in the medium and longer term as well. So, as a consequence of this uh, brutal war, uh, we have seen uh, many uh, reactions. And I just collected a few headlines uh, of the uh, media. Uh, over the uh, few weeks. So, uh, these reactions, they have been, uh, uh, let's say, quite uh, emotional. Uh, uh, very clearly, the energy stop agenda in uh, across Europe. Uh, we see that the uh, politicians, both uh, nationally, regionally, European wise, they uh, want to do something uh, in order to uh, support uh, consumers in this very, very uh, difficult situation. And actually, uh, we don't know yet uh, uh, what will be the outcome. We uh, hope to uh, hear news from the European Commission by the end of October now. And uh, let's see uh, what and in what uh, frequency or and uh, what time schedule will be implemented. Uh, so there is a lot of uncertainty. And of course, we as investors, uh, we are afraid that the, uh, uh, this very fast and, uh, and the massive interventions will not uh, kill actually the appetite uh, to invest into the energy system because investments are massively needed. 
we, we saw already illustration about the price dynamics. Uh, I just uh, uh, was putting here the regional uh, power prices, which are uh, a little bit of comparison of the first half of the 22 and uh, then uh, August uh, uh, this year. And uh, I, I know a stolen number, it's pretty much the same probably for the join in, in August. The price uh, was uh, uh, four times higher than a year, year ago, 21 uh, August, and then nine times higher than uh, 2020 August. I know the number about Estonia again, it might be quite similar in Lithuania that only for the power Estonian consumers this year will be around 1 billion euros more than a year before. 1 billion euros. Think about GDP and everything else. So it's, it's a massive, and as a consequence, uh, we see and hear about the inflation numbers, which is uh, double digit than the multi region, even uh, 20 plus percent, which is, of course, uh, heavy, uh, heavy uh, consequences to all the industries. And of course, our competitiveness, as we see that uh, average in, uh, in Europe, EU, is around the 10 percent. Uh, so we have to think about our industries, uh, how they will survive this extremely difficult time. No, no, the second, uh, another uh, uh, test or viewpoint, how to see from where our energy comes. And here I speak uh, all, all energy, what we use. Uh, uh, doesn't matter, uh, is it uh, transportation, heating, uh, uh, industry, or whatever. So uh, you can see that uh, still a peak part uh, uh, comes from fossil fuels. And I wanted to put here uh, data of 21, but actually Eurostat is a bit slow. I didn't have Eurostat numbers from 21, but uh, it's not much changed. More than 70% still comes from the fossil fuels. So the congratulations, the traditional energy, you are doing well still. And uh, we don't see it changing as fast as, as, as we want, would like it to, to change. So um, we also uh, have seen on the previous speakers from there those fossil fuels are coming. So there are two things. One is that uh, this is fossil emissions are there. Another is that it comes uh, the sources which are very difficult to control and the big portion has disappeared for us from the market to, to the uh, world. Now what we will do with this? And uh, here again I have picked uh, the uh, public sources, the uh, goals, uh, governmentals are having uh, goals. Uh, for us as investors it's not even very clear uh, what governments want to do. Uh, after today's notes, I have to uh, revise it again. I heard already that uh, some rules are up. But you know, for us, this is an order. For us as investors, this is an order from the governments. So, uh, again, I'm uh, uh, actually congratulations to the Lithuanian government and authorities. Uh, the Lithuanian goal is one of the uh, clearest for investors, uh, also most ambitious. And uh, it makes us to act, and maybe this is. Uh, one of the reasons uh, why we are the biggest uh, uh, renewable uh, generator in Estonia, uh, in uh, Lithuania, and the growing also very fast. We have two wind uh, parks under construction, probably one more investment decision even this year. So, but this is extremely important that we have a goals which are clear and ambitious enough uh, to uh, communicate to the investors. Then the next thing that we should keep in mind, uh, maybe many of you have seen uh, this third energy council uh, methodology, uh, energy trilemma. Uh, this trilemma, in a very simple word, is, a, uh, is a three uh, corners of the, uh, of the energy, uh, uh, energy exercise we, we have to solve. Uh, one is, of course, the environment. Another thing is uh, uh, affordability. Are we ready to uh, pay those prices? And the third is a security supply. This is the actual picture of Estonia, by the way, uh, last autumn, year ago. I think this picture will be much different uh, when we have a fresh one by the end of this year. And maybe for your information, the World Energy Council, uh, uh, where I'm also part, uh, I'm chair of the Estonian National Committee, we are doing a uh, Baltic. Uh, Deep dive, so that the train is also on board. So uh, with Vec uh, uh, London, we are doing a deep dive for the Baltic region, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, study should be available uh, by the end of the year, so that uh, then we will see how it looks in a Baltic perspective. But it's extremely important that uh, uh, we should uh, take this triangle uh, and all the corners uh, all together anytime. So two years ago, uh, environmental aspect was uh, most what we were speaking about. 
and the price and the security to apply the supply was a little bit like uh, hanging somewhere in the air. A uh, year ago, we had a mostly uh, price because you remember the prices in December, the last winter prices were very high, the price was top priority. Today, security supply is very much in the air. But the power suggestion to any policy makers, and the, in a point of view of the investor, is extremely important at any time, any moment, whatever it is in the air, to speak about all those three and find the proper balance. Because, you know, in the energy sector, the things are taking time. So if we decide today, the soonest what can happen is a two or three years, and this is extremely fast, normally five years and even more if we're talking about Oshawa. And uh, uh, with this actually, uh, to also say that uh, we, we have very clear ambition to uh, make our power generation uh, carbon neutral by 2030 and all our company emissions to uh, zero by 2045. We have a very realistic plan to do so, um, and uh, we are on the on the way. We call this journey journey to zero, and this is not our own journey, but this is our journey together with our customers, and we will explain how it works. We have been witnessing extremely high power prices, and this is the uh, uh, the uh, slide I have been using while I was working with Oracle, uh, as I have been. Uh, heading the team opening the uh, uh, power market in Lithuania in 2012. I used to drain all the stakeholders here, I still have those slides uh, available. Uh, this is a principle of marginal pricing. You know, uh, the price will be formed by the uh, last uh, uh, generation asset to the market and it's very simple uh, hint. We need uh, more of those uh, low marginal uh, uh, cost uh, uh, generation units, which is uh, wind, hydro, nuclear, and the solar. More we have, the uh, lower is the price. So it's it's very simple, and you, we can always actually uh, uh, use this model and see actually where our price will be depending what is our consumption and how many generation assets we have available. So if somebody is saying this market is guilty uh, of our high prices, we can shut down the market. We can make a regulated uh, system, but still uh, we need a more generation. So that market is a mirror. A market is showing what is our situation uh, out on the street. So uh, uh, I think market works very well, but it gives a signal to be more renewable capacities. So how will we do it? Uh, the journey to zero. Uh, we believe on the electrification. Because there are so many uh, uses of the uh, uh, liquid fuels, uh, uh, gas, natural gas, which we can electrify, and we have all those technologies available, very often those technologies are also very affordable. Those are pretty cheap and, uh, and making economical sense as well. Think about gas fired uh, oil to heat the uh, house compared to heat pump. You have seen the prices uh, to energy unit, the uh, prices are almost the same, but the heat pump nowadays is giving six times efficiency. So it's right away, don't go and do it. Uh, if somebody is still heating uh, with the gas, it's a very good idea to change to the electric uh, uh, the heat pump. Think about the car. The simple calculation to the current number shows that if you drive more than 20,000 kilometers per year, total cost much less with the uh, electric vehicle. Why we see so few on the streets in politics? No reason. This is just in our thinking, and uh, and uh, maybe the other in time of the electric vehicle is too long. But but otherwise, it all might work. So that uh, 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 transportation sector giving one quarter of our emissions, we can electrify. If we think about uh, industries, <coughs> many parts uh, which are using to the gas or liquid fuels can be electrified. And think about our uh, buildings. Uh, first of all, efficiency, uh, still uh, the best investments are to efficiency, then uh, heating, cooling, uh, uh, we can do a lot uh, through uh, electrification. So this is, this is the way we want to go, this is our journey to zero, we want to do it together with our customers. We want to be uh, friendly experts to our uh, customers, as uh, this is something uh, they don't know, but uh, we as experts on energy, we can uh, support. How we make our investments? You know, uh, one can say that uh, prices are so high, it's easy to uh, speak to Mr. Sutter because uh, these investments are paying back uh, in a few years. You are right, but you don't remember what were the prices two years ago? 30 euros, 34. 
no way to invest. Our investments are made for 30 years, 40 years. And we have actually the same challenge as the customers. We don't know what is the price in five years. We want to some certainty. So uh, we started one and a half year, a year ago to go with uh, power purchase agreements, uh, probably first in the Baltic area. By today, we have been uh, uh, signing those contracts more than 100,000, around the 15 terawatt hours, which is uh, more than yearly China consumption. And this has been actually uh, a for the customers has been a fixing price at affordable level, and uh, they have a perspective. They know what the power will cost for them. And for us, this has been ensuring enough cash flow to even increase our ambition to invest. We have now uh, committed already 2.5 billion euros investments up to 26. Uh, we want to uh, uh, increase four times our renewable uh, capacities to benefit green. And uh, I think, uh, as we see a lot of demand still uh, from the customer side to uh, fix their prices, we already probably even increased this ambition. Then another thing, uh, we have heard about the grids and the huge investments needed to the uh, grids, uh, and this is true. Uh, uh, but we also have to keep in mind that actually, as a regulated business, uh, all those investments are coming back to our bills, so that don't ask it too loud because you will get higher bills. But it, it is always good to think how uh, better uh, utilize the existing grid uh, capacities. And one thing what we have been promoting, and uh, I will talk this to uh, Lithuanian Minister, uh, this afternoon as well, that uh, let's uh, build the hybrid parks. We have this experience, it, it works pretty well. You see uh, the uh, capacity efficiency factor on the uh, solar parks is less than 15% because uh, there is a lot of time uh, when the solar park doesn't generate. On the wind, uh, uh, onshore wind is around 40, on offshore wind even more. But if we put them together, uh, meaning that uh, in the time where there is sunny, the normal there is not uh, much wind and vice versa, we can increase this usage of the interconnection to the grid uh, much, much better way and generate more value to the society. So this is something we should uh, massively promote also to uh, use internet connections uh, on the hybrid uh, modes. About the uh, offshore. We are following, uh, uh, we are following uh, of course, the Lithuanian uh, project. I think Lithuania has done a great job to develop this uh, uh, 700 uh, uh, megawatt area for the offshore wind. But uh, also, uh, since 2010, actually, I think has been developing uh, the uh, offshore area uh, uh, near to the border of uh, Latvia, south of Estonia. Maybe some of you know the beautiful island of Kismo in Estonia. South of Kino, and uh, you can see City of Bern also there. Uh, we have uh, all the uh, rights for this area. Uh, we have a special state planning for the interconnection connecting this to the mainland grid. And we have EIA uh, process on the way uh, uh, going, and uh, we want to reach the investment decision by 25. So we have uh, all the good chances to get this uh, uh, park up and ready by 28. Uh, the capacity is around uh, uh, 1 gigawatt. Uh, uh, the total generation, uh, uh, 4 terawatt hours uh, uh, investment around 2 billion euros uh, and uh, we certainly want to make sure that this will be a part of our listed business so that uh, anybody who wants to be uh, together with us on this journey can invest into this, uh, this park as well. It is not clear yet uh, whether it will be uh, part of NFT Green or separate but, uh, but uh, this is our idea to increase this mandate uh, to go ahead with the uh, uh, on this journey, also in, in the investor side. So, uh, as we say, zero had never so much value. <laughs> we, we see that really what was also mentioned before, uh, the, uh, uh, this transition, and especially this uh, brutal war, in the other hand, uh, is giving also many of opportunities. Let's use those opportunities, actually, and we can go. Uh, we want to do it together with our customers, uh, with our investors, with our partners uh, in all the markets where we are, also here in Ukraine. And uh, thank you very much uh, for a such good welcome over 10 plus years what we have in Ukraine. And, uh, and uh, I hope, Robert, uh, we will see you next year again. Definitely. Definitely.